welcome to our channel, Five Kids, Four Wheels. Today we're gonna show you how our brand new Mercedes Sprinter van drives. So here's my husband, Cody. He's Hello. gonna take you through the mechanics of it. Yep, so as you can see, uh, it's a pretty high ride height, like I mentioned in our intro video. Uh, you can almost see in the windows of semi trucks driving by. But it has a really large windscreen, which is nice. Really large side windows, good visibility. Uh, the mirrors are nice because you have the wide angle lower mirror. Uh, and of course, uh, they don't stick out too far, which is nice. They're also powerful for parking, which is good. Um, the overall ride is pretty good. It's a little bouncy, but this thing is a, on a full truck frame with leaf spring suspension in the back. Um, but it's pretty composed for such a big van. We've got all the kids in it right now, so excuse me if you hear some of them it's, it's about nap time uh, some of them are already sleeping the good thing about this van is the kids seem to fall asleep pretty quick in it uh, it's, it comes with privacy glass in the back so it's already really dark uh, the air conditioning the jamming and even on a low setting the kids freeze up and they need a blanket so that's pretty good uh, overall the the kids seem to like the ride uh, as far as my wife driving she's five foot four five foot five and uh, you can adjust the seat high or low. She likes to keep it low. Um, I'm a low it, rider. <laughs> as you can see, the steering wheel is not too big. It doesn't feel like a school bus steering wheel. It's leather wrapped. Uh, it's really easy to see the, the dash, the instruments. Uh, one thing I, I think is the, the brakes seem to work really good. Uh, they really grab well, help slow this big van down. Uh, they don't feel touchy, this feel really strong. That was probably one of the first things I noticed. Yeah, I still got a ace in the mirrors though, and the turns. The turns are kind of difficult for me. Yeah, so but this, this is like my fourth time driving this van, so. Yeah, this van's like 22 feet long, so you have to watch your, your back wheels when you take turns, make sure you're not hopping over the curb, make sure you're not taking out the stop sign. Wide turns. <laughs> So this van does have the, the four cylinder, it's a two liter turbocharged gasoline engine. Uh, it's 188 horsepower and 260, 270 foot pounds of torque, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it does have Mercedes new nine speed uh, transmission, which is actually a really good transmission. It keeps this thing right in the torque band, really nice. So it's really effortless to, to accelerate and go. We have no problems driving this around, getting up to speed. Um, one cool thing uh, that Mercedes does, it gives you like an information page here and tells you about consumption, but also gives you like a performance page. And it tells you how much horsepower you're making, how many, how many uh, foot pounds of torque you're making, tells you coolant temperature, oil temperature. Uh, it's pretty neat. So as you can see here, we're making 48 horsepower. Oh, now we're making zero. But it's just one of those nifty kind of things uh, if you're into it. Talk about the tent, because it feels like super bright up here. For me, my eyes are like always hurting in the sun when we're driving this car. Yeah, so I need to wear my sunglasses. we're gonna get the the front windows tinted. The dealer, or the dealer, the window tint place quoted us 125 bucks to get the, the window plus the quarter windows tinted. I hope you can see we got blind spot activation working there, which is nice. So yeah, it's a little bit of a fishbowl effect, but in a big van you want the visibility. So I think once the front windows are tinted, it'll be a lot better. Um, so let's see what else we can talk about. So to control the the center screen in the middle there on the left side of the steering wheel, there's a little little tiny square there and it's touch sensitive. So you can just scroll up and down and it goes through the various fit pages there of uh, fuel consumption, trip yeah, it's distance. Like yeah, it's like swiping, it's really neat. And to control this screen, this is the seven inch screen. You can't get the premium plus pack and you get the 10 inch screen, but this one's just fine. Anyways, to control this screen, it's the same uh, only on the right side of the steering wheel. You have a little touch sensitive pad there as well as your, your radio and phone controls. Uh, so it's all really convenient. Um, we did we did mount a little like magnetic stand here for our iPhones that have the, the MagSafe on it. So it's kind of a, a neat spot to keep your phone. Um, but it also has up here a compartment that you can open up. You have wireless charge pad in there. Plus a cable for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, um, if that's your choice. Another thing I think that's kind of interesting are these vents. You think these were the defrost vents, but they're not. They're just vents that cool this front area down because it's such a large area. Because the, the van does have defrost up there, as you can see. 
Plus we have these like weird little cup holder things and storage up front here, which I guess you could put a little bottle of water or something. Unless it may fly out at you. Where are we going? Life's lost. I don't even know where we're going. Big jerky outlet. Where's that at? Buffalo Gap. I gotta get back on the highway. Yeah, we gotta turn around. All right. What else? So another thing I'll note in here, since it is a, a solid rear axle, uh, the cabin can sound kind of jarry and bouncy um, on on bumpy roads or a little a little echoey on the highway. So the ways we've mitigated that, uh, I put a cargo mat, a rubber mat down in the cargo area. Just went to tractor supply and got a four by three foot rubber mat, which actually fills up the area pretty good and acts as some sound deadening. Once the car seats went in, that absorbed some of the sound. Then I've ordered uh, from SprinterUpgrades.com some carpeted floor mats for this uh, second, third, and fourth row, and they have they're a little thicker than normal, so they have some sound deadening properties to them. So that should help. Um, that should help reduce some of the the extra chatter in the cabin. But as far as wind noise, it's not too bad. This thing's sealed up pretty good. Um, the engine's pretty quiet. You can't even hear exhaust, so that's good if you want a nice, quiet cabin. Um, other than that, it's, it's pretty comfortable. Um, like I said, you, you do sit up super high, but that's kind of kind of nice because you can see traffic really well. Um, we do end up relying on our side mirrors a lot more than the this mirror because, as you can see, the visibility, hold on, let me squeeze around. The visibility out the back with that, the center of the doors is tough. You have a really big blind spot uh, right in the direct behind of the car. Whoops, that's okay. So we do use the mirrors a lot, but when you're going slow, parking, or stopped, you can hit this camera button here, and you have the 360 camera system, which can show you in front of the car, a super wide angle behind the, the vehicle, a little narrower, straight down the back um, it's really intuitive and the, the, it is an additional option it's the parking package so I would recommend that if you're, if you're thinking about getting this van and you're worried about driving around the city and parking the 360 cameras are a lifesaver um, there's cameras mounted you can't really see it but there's cameras mounted on each of the mirrors up in the front grill and on the very back of the van up top above the doors is a big camera that gives you that rear angle. As you can see, this is a lifted truck in front of us and we still sit up much higher than it. So you do have to watch uh, those low clearances. Uh, I think this thing is about 96 inches tall, plus the antenna and the air conditioner. Anything else, babe? Want no. to talk about driving? Just let me know in the comments if I look ridiculous or not driving this thing. <laughs> My wife thinks she looks silly driving this thing because it's it's uncool, oh. but it's super convenient. Um, I think it looks a little better than the Ford Transit. It doesn't have that that droopy front look. It looks a little more upright. You probably haven't seen a lot of these passenger ones on the road, but if you if you are familiar with FedEx home delivery vehicles, they do drive the older Mercedes Sprinters, and it gives you a little bit better idea of the proportions. A little shorter nose, um, just a little bit more of a, a higher ride height than the Transit, so it's not quite as dorky. Some say the Transit rides a little bit better, um, but it's a give and take, right? So this this is a standard roof height, which was which is nice. You don't have to get the high roof version to get overhead storage. And again, you can almost stand up in this cabin uh, about, I think probably, I can stand you can up. stand up, yeah. so 5.5, like, five, five, like, yeah, 5.4, five, 5.5. Five, five. If you get the high roof version, it's like up to six foot eight, and it's crazy. But as you can see, everybody's happy back there. Um, the, it's really cool because these all these air vents can be pivoted in different directions, closed. The baby's starting to wake up a little bit. So my, wife's, my wife's driving. Thanks. <laughs> I'm still learning. It's a big car. There is a bunch of auxiliary um, hookups here. There's a, these are just dummy switches right now, but you can kind of deck this thing out a lot of people turn these these sprinters into campers or off-road vehicles they put it you know extra lighting on them roof toppers tents you can put awning retractable awnings on the side ladders up the side you you name it and this thing can turn into 
kind of like your, your mobile command post. So we're going to keep it just for, for passenger traveling um, and not make it look too ridiculous. Um, so up front here, I kind of will talk about, so we have a really nice big area for the dog. We put down a pad. We're waiting for some WeatherTech a cargo liner to come in. They don't make floor mats, but they do make a cargo liner for this whole area that covers the hump, they call it, and then the, both the driver and passenger footwells. Uh, right now we kind of got this little caddy bucket here with anti-COVID cleaning stuff and some tissues. And yeah, we put this rug in here because our golden doodle freaks out in this car. So she slides all around on the vinyl floor. So we put the rug to give her some more grip, but she can't really see out the sides. So she's kind of panicky. So we're working on that, but the, that rug helps her get some more traction. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll get her used to it. So this vehicle also has uh, the uh, autonomous braking. If you forget to brake and the car in front of you has stopped, this thing will turn the brakes on by itself. Um, in, the, in the settings here, you can actually adjust the, the sensitivity of that system if you want. Um, you can turn off your electronic stability control, your lane keep assist, your parking aids. Um, you can change your camera settings, your active lane keep assist, the active brake assist what I was just talking about. You can have that on early warning, medium, or late. Turn it off altogether if you want. This also has Mercedes attention assist, so it'll keep kind of keep track on if you're making control inputs, if it seems like you're drifting off. You can have it set to sensitive if you're tired or just standard or off. Uh, you know, what we'll do, it'll kind of kind of make some noise and, and, and we'll try to wake you up if it senses that you're not focused or your hands aren't on the wheel. So that's kind of neat. Hopefully we never have to see how it works. Um, you can also adjust the door locking mode um, I'm not really sure what acoustic lock is. Maybe that's the, the noise it makes when it locks. Um, exterior light delay is kind of cool. What it does is once you shut the vehicle off and everybody's unloading, it turns the headlights off, but it keeps the LED running lights on and it turns on the fog lights. So you'll have the fog lights illuminate the, the path in front of the vehicle. 60, 45, 30, or 15 seconds, which is nice so people don't trip or step on a rattlesnake here in Texas trying to go inside uh, same with interior de lighting delay so we kind of call this like the the school bus railroad crossing light so there's a, a button up here and you can turn on all the lights in the cabin well, that's just the first one anyways push that button there and all the lights turn on and they're LED lights but they're soft uh, they're soft white they're not cool white so that's kind of nice they're not super super bright cool LED it's nice warm soft but it lights up the whole thing we tell the kids we're to be quiet because we're crossing the railroad but we're just that's just an inside joke my wife and I have she thought it was funny <laughs> anyways yeah so the Look at this. see what? people like this man he's checking it yeah, out so everybody checks us out even the guy driving the delivery truck he's like man I need to get me one of those my wife thinks that people are making fun of us but I think people are like <laughs> wow I've never really seen one of those Mercedes Sprinter vans in Abilene Texas yeah, um, likes it. So, what do you want to do? Yeah, um, so Mercedes is a little annoying. The M bug system is really sensitive. Anytime you say something that sounds like Mercedes, um, it's a, a voice assistant. We don't use it. Please repeat. Yeah, we don't know what we she wants us to do. The boys try to make it talk like Siri, but we'll still have to figure that out. Maybe do another video on that. Anyways, the, you got some more system settings here for the display, the controls. Um, audio settings, um, your voice activation controls. We can actually turn Hey Mercedes off for a while because we're not using it. So, yeah, really intuitive. Apple CarPlay works good. Um, this does come with satellite radio built in, which is nice. This particular model doesn't have navigation, but we don't need it because Android Auto and Apple CarPlay um, work really good. So I think that kind of wraps it up for driving. We've just kind of been putting around town here. It's a quiet ride. Lost. Um, oh yeah, my wife's lost. Um, if you've never driven a big van and you compare this to like the a Honda Odyssey that we used to have, it does feel like you're driving a big van. That's kind of <laughs> kind of like a bus. Yeah, I feel like I'm driving a bus. But the cool thing is, is I'm sitting right over the wheels, I feel like. So oh yeah, my turns... Good. You know, like I don't have to 
They're yeah. different. I don't so know how to explain it. If you guys are thinking about getting a Nissan NV that has the V8 in it uh, with a really long nose, your view of the road right in front of you is going to be pushed way out. If you've ever driven like a, a GMC Sierra or Chevy Silverado and the hood's really long, um, that's not what this is. So it's a really sh short hood. And I mean, the visibility right in front of the car is great. I mean, you can it's just a few feet in front of the tires and we can see really good. You don't even see the hood, which is nice. So yeah, I think that's an advantage when it comes to making sure you're not running over your cat or dog in the driveway. Um, plus there's parking sensors up front. Yeah, I'm sitting like right at the point of turn. Like. And we're about at, at the place we're going. So we'll start wrapping up the video here. I'll show you again what the parking cameras do when we're actually pulling into a spot. Okay. Obviously you can't have the parking sensors on when you're moving above a certain speed. I think they turn on, there it goes, right under 10 miles an hour. My wife's pulling in the parking oh. lot the wrong way. <laughs> so that's embarrassing. It's really embarrassing. Crazy. Maybe she'll back it into a spot. Yeah. Anyway, so we'll look at the camera. So you got your top down view, left and right, and then you got the view right in front of you, which is nice. Um, or you can just switch it to all in front of you. Nice wide angle. Um, I'm not really sure why you want this view unless you're trying to see like what is directly in front of the bumper or how close you are to a curb or a, a light pole fixture. Or you can turn on 360 and this shows you how you're pulling to a spot really nicely. I mean, you can get yourself right in the lines. Um, you can see some reflection there. Uh, for normal parking, I kind of just keep it. All right, will I fit in that spot right there? Yeah, that's a good test. Oh gosh. Right try here? To... Oh, no. <laughs> Just try. No. You can do it. Please. You can do it. You're good. It's perfect. Use your cameras. Oh, you're a little close. Maybe back up a little bit. Oh, we didn't talk about this, but Mercedes uses a little column shift, Wait, but it's all we'll electronic. That parked. It's uh, not like a manual um, column shift. It's to park, you push that button, and then down is drive, up is reverse. It's really intuitive. It's nice and small, tucked out of the way. How about right here? Yeah, this park in the big puddle. Right here. This is perfect. Park in front of the cake store. So you can see the guy turns with you. Top down, you can see if you're in the lanes, which my wife did pretty good. She's pretty much in the lanes, as good as we can be for this big car. Um, yeah, easy. Oh, another nice thing is when you push park, it automatically turns on the electronic parking brake, which is convenient. It saves you a step. Are you sure? Yeah. Where is it? You want to turn on? No. Did you put it in park? Yeah. No. Nope. Let me turn it on for you. Oh. Well, usually it does. Well, it's we'll not doing anything. To... Oh, there it is. We're still trying to figure this car out. But uh -huh. usually it turns on the brake for you, which is nice. Okay. Good enough. I think it's almost 20 minutes of talking about this thing. Uh, if you want to know something more or... Maybe we'll do a, a video, short video when we get on the highway later just so you can hear it and see what it's like. Yep, subscribe to our channel, Five Kids, Four Wheels. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope this helps, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.